Hello and welcome to this SketchUp Pro 2019 review by Ruby Sketch, makers of Plusbeck for SketchUp. Now, if you are watching this video, I assume you love SketchUp as much as we do. However, if you are an architect, designer, builder, contractor, estimator, or even a tradesperson, you're going to love SketchUp even more with Plusbeck. Now, there's no doubt that SketchUp is the easiest and funnest way to draw in 3D. But in our opinion, it's also the only CAD software that you can actually design with. All of the other systems are merely 2D drafting boards. And that's why Plusbeck is inside of SketchUp. So you can benefit from all of the amazingness that is SketchUp, but combine it with the Plusbeck parametric BIM, that's building information modeling, virtual design and construction, and estimating tools. And together, they provide the perfect recipe for design and construction businesses to build better businesses. So if you want to find out more about Plusbeck, click on our website, the link will be below, but we're going to now jump right in to the SketchUp Pro 2019 review. Okay, all in all, everything feels faster and cleaner, both in SketchUp and layout. You can definitely feel the difference in speed, which I think everyone will love. However, at first look, many of the updates or new features may feel slightly underwhelming. Um, but when you do dig deeper, you will realize that these changes are actually a lot bigger than you first thought. That being said, the main focus of this release has been based around the shift to the subscription model or the introduction of the subscription model because the perpetual license is still available. Now in this review, we're not going to be going through the subscription or the perpetual pricing and everything. Uh, if you want to know that, go to the SketchUp website or to your reseller's website. In this review, we're going to stick to the new features and improvements in SketchUp and in Layout. So let's start with SketchUp. Okay, so the first thing is the welcome to SketchUp, the uh, welcome window or the splash screen. It will open when you first open SketchUp. You can always get it through the help menu and you'll just see that the look and feel has changed. The first thing that you'll be able to do is now access your account and do more things with it since uh, there is also the subscription and the different modules and, and different bits and pieces there. So you'll want to take a look. Uh, you, there is also the introduction of the Learn and it still has the forum and the videos, but for subscription licenses, you can now access this new SketchUp campus and it's going to be filled with uh, training resources and videos, etc., for beginner, intermediate and advanced users. Now, the other thing that I think is really good here is that in the past, if you wanted to change the template style or the units of measurements, you'd have to open up the splash screen, choose the template, press OK, close down SketchUp completely, relaunch it, and then it would open it. However, now you don't need to do that. You can simply click on the style and the units of measurements that you want, and it will launch it. So you can actually have multiple styles and multiple units of measurements open at once. And I think this is really useful. However, you will want to re-familiarize yourself with the names because the naming convention of the templates has changed. So just go through and take a look at that. But this now takes me to what I think is the best new feature of SketchUp 2019. I think it's awesome. And that is that you can now add line styles directly in SketchUp. And these are controlled by the layer manager. So you're gonna see that the layer manager also looks slightly different now. You can do all the same things, but there is the introduction to this dashes section. And so if I click on this dashes, dash section or dashes section, I can go through and I can choose from the traditional solid line back to the different dashes, dots, and the combinations. Basically every single line style that you would need in traditional 2D drawing. This has been an, a long awaited feature and me, I love it. I think it's gonna have a lot of use here. And it's going to change not only the way you can communicate in a 3D model, but also in your 2D drawings in layout. So I've just opened a really simple prospect for SketchUp model. I'm not gonna to get too caught up in the different bits and pieces here, but I wanna show you that um, how you can control different kind of elements with this tool, because it is worth noting that uh, this line feature won't work with section cut. So if you take section cut through a wall that you've assigned a line type to, it will still read solid. So it is more for boundaries, sites, other objects, and, and those kinds of things. 
Um, and really, the benefit for our Plusbec users is that because you're virtually designing construction and constructing and using BIM tools, so you know tools that know that there are a wall, a window, door, and other building components, the layers are automatically created for you, and they're based around the materials, so they're very easy to understand. So now it will become very easy for users just to identify the different pieces in their in their projects right out of the box and just go through and say, right, okay, so the site I want to turn into this line type and, or for example, the site might actually be dosh, uh, the dots and then the boundary is going to be this line type. And as you can see, it's really transformed the 3D model. I think it reads really well. Um, and you can now actually communicate the differences between lines and, and objects. And Plusbec also automatically generates your 2D drawings and your 3D scenes. So these are the ones that enable you to, to really pull back and strip back the, uh, the model or your project so you can analyze structure, etc. That's virtual design and construction. So I think all in all, it ties in really well with all of those uh, things that you can do. The next thing that I want to talk about though is the tape measure tool. So the tape measure tool has been enhanced so that you can now see the length of a line, area of a face, and the coordinates just by hovering over objects in space with the tape measure tool activated. Now this sounds like it's pretty minor, but actually in my opinion, I think it's really powerful and I think it will become a much loved new feature. So I'm gonna quickly describe it. Again, I've activated the tape measure tool and when you hover over a face, it's now going to tell you the area. Now I'm using a metric version here, so that's why it's in metric. But if I hover over the line or the edge, it tells me the length of that edge. And where I really like it is when you do the endpoint because this is going to give you the coordinates here. So your your um, green, red, and blue axes. And I think it's the blue axes that's going to be really beneficial. Uh, so you can very quickly hover over a point and understand heights. So that's going to be particularly relevant for RLs, finished floor levels, etc. So I'm going to give another quick example on this because I think that it will now tie into the uh, origin point or the zero zero point. So I've opened a new SketchUp file and I just want to quickly jump into a Plusbec wall. I'm not going to get caught up in the wall type or anything else, so I'm just going to click on it and I'm going to start drawing. So yeah, that's good enough for me. Just check my, my lumbers, 16 on center, two, one, whatever, doesn't matter. I'm using two by four, press submit. Now, the zero, zero point or this origin point has been often, I guess, neglected in a lot of workflows. But now with this new tape measure tool, I think it becomes a lot better if you actually start to pay attention to where you're actually drawing from. So I would probably be suggesting that the zero, zero point or that origin point is probably a set out point. And what's going to be beneficial now with a tape measure, I'm just going to strip this model back. As you can see, Plusbex created all the scenes and layers for me. Uh, if I go into my tape measure, not only can I confirm that I've drawn you know, the different heights in my model, and I know that that's a nine foot, one inch wall, because that's what I set in my Plusbec wall tool, but it also enables me to understand the uh, coordinates of the other aspects, so on the gray, in the green and the red. And I think that there's some interesting things that you might be able to do with this. Um, but again, for me, it really comes back to the ability to find out height. So I'm going to give you an example here. It's going to quickly drop in a joist. I'm not going to get caught up in detail again. So all I'm going to do is select that, press submit, and I'm just going to tell it which way to span. I'm going to go onto the all now. And as you can see, it's generated that structure. I can further customize that if I really wanted to, but I don't want to here. I'm just going to show you like in the past, finished floor levels and everything could be a little bit tricky to determine, but now just with the tape measure tool, you can simply go straight up to the point that you want, hover over it, and you now know what your finished floor level is. So you can then capture that in your 2D drawings, maybe add some kind of notation or notes in the 3D model if you needed to, so that you can pull out those points. So I think it's really beneficial. Now this next uh, item isn't really that important for existing Plusbec users because Plusbec comes with its own section hatching tool and they're solid sections so you can choose from colors, hatching, patterns, etc. And they are live so if you move the section it moves with it. Um, but inside of SketchUp now, the 
there is an improvement to the section fill. So we've got this shape here. I'm going to quickly drop in a new section, place it, and I'm going to put it here. And I'm just going to grab that section and move it in. Now, you will notice that uh, in SketchUp 2018, it released this tool. So it's the section fill tool, and you can control it via color, etc. However, there was a slight problem, and that was when or if you hit a face, then and you tried to cut it, it wouldn't actually fill it. So now they fixed that which is great, so it's a minor improvement, but it's good. Um, you still do need to be careful with how much you hide. So for example, by hiding all of those aspects, it will no longer uh, do the fill. But pretty cool, nevertheless. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to layout. So I'm just going to send this to layout. Now, like SketchUp, the layout is going to open with a new splash screen or a welcome window. Um, it's mainly aesthetics that have changed here, um, but you can go through and choose your different paper sizes as per normal. It is worth noting that if you have created your own title blocks and page types, etc., or if you've downloaded uh, the Ruby Sketch uh, 2D drawing pack, you will need to reload it in this version as per normal. I'm just going to select this one to start with. And we'll wait for that one to load. There we go. I'm going to quickly grab it and just manipulate it a little bit. Get that and move it out to like that. And then I'm also going to now discuss the new SketchUp model dialog. So there has been a couple of changes here. Uh, you'll notice that the overall global line weight control has been moved to the bottom, which I think is really nifty. It's going to make it a lot faster. Previously, previously, you had to go into styles and it was down in there, etc. Um, but so now you can go through and obviously you can manipulate the global line weights if you want. Uh, I'm just going to put it back to 0 0.6. Uh, and obviously, you've still got the raster hybrid vector. Press OK. And you'll notice, which is really important, that the new line styles that you've done in SketchUp are captured in layout. But they take it a step further, and this is where it becomes really, really good. Because you're going to have uh, you know, references from your model, and you're going to be setting out plans of different scales and elevations, etc. So you're going to need advanced control of those new lines. And you'll see that above the uh, hybrid vector and uh, raster tab, you have this auto tab. Auto means that uh, SketchUp and Layout is going to do their best to figure out what's going to display the best uh, line kind of format here in this view. But this is where you can start to then manually go through and change it. So you might want to say, no, I want it to be really spread apart or I want it to go really close together. So you've got a lot of control here and you can do it per drawing. So you can that's how you can basically change uh, every scene. Uh, I think that's the missing element or it's 100% required um, because there's no point of being able to have just lines, new lines that you could draw in SketchUp if you couldn't manually uh, manipulate them in the layout also. So I love this. The next thing that I'm going to discuss is fairly minor, but I really like it because it's user experience. And you'll notice that when you're drafting, you can zoom in really fast and zoom out really fast, depending on your mouse and also the way that you use the wheel in layout. But now you've got a lot more control. So you can go into your preferences and under general, you will now see that you've got the ability to really play around with your uh, mouse scroll speed. So you can uh, have it slower if you need to or faster, depending on your mouse and also your style. So you can customize your drafting experience to suit the way that you like to model. I think that is, is even though it's minor, it's really cool. Uh, the next point is layout file locking. Now this is something that a lot of people didn't even know, but in older versions of layout, you could actually open a file multiple times by accident, but the other versions that you open aren't opened as read only so it could end up creating kind of a little bit of chaos in and how changes are saved so especially if you're in a network where you've got multiple people you know having the, the ability to jump into the same file so now layout files are locked as soon as they are opened uh, and this removes the user error and protects files uh, so if the same file is opened by the same user or even another user in a network, it will still open, but it will be read-only and it will read as such. So this is a great kind of user experience um, 
little improvement here. So this now takes me to my final point, and that is the improvements to the DWG or DXF import and export. So first and foremost, you can now import and export 2018 DWG files. This is great if you're working with other project stakeholders who need that latest DWG format. However, for me, the main advantage is that they've now added the ability to save your layout um, drawings as a DWG so that you can open them in SketchUp. This doesn't sound really that great, but let me just try and explain it. Because in 2018, an amazing feature was added to Layout, and that's the scale drawing. It basically has turned Layout into AutoCAD so that you can draw to scale in 2D. You couldn't actually do that before. So now you've got the ability to put in all of your own 2D details or to go off and even just decide to start uh, creating your plans in 2D before you go into 3D, for example. However, it had a disconnect because you couldn't just then save it as a DWG or open it in SketchUp. So now you can. What you need to do is go to File and you need to uh, Export. And then you need to obviously select the DWG or the DXF. Just wait for that one to load. And then now you can go into the Options and it is the Export for SketchUp. That is the new feature. You'll want to tick that, press OK. You then save it and then open SketchUp and select Import and then find that DWG or DXF. So I've just done a really simple shape here. That's all I'm trying to showcase. Uh, so it's just a 10 foot kind of wall, I guess, with six inch thick, so it's probably concrete. I'll show you how that looks in the model. Okay, so I've opened the SketchUp file and I've imported it. You can see it's come through. Now, don't judge me, it's just a very basic shape, but it's showing that principle that you're able to now reference those, anything that you create in your 2D documentation. So, you know, it might be that I wanted to do a plan in 2D mode before even looking at 3D. So I might be like, okay, cool, solid wall, six inch. Uh, concrete, press submit, and then now I can grab those points so it makes it really easy for me to trace. And the best part about the Pluspec tools is if something doesn't look all right or if you want to change anything, super easy to do. You can come in here and say it needs to be 30 feet, for example, and I need to assign a material. So I need to assign concrete, press submit. Okay, so that's the end of our review. So I'm going to just finish with a final recommendation. Look, even though the new tools and features look somewhat light, we think that 2019 is still definitely 100% worth the upgrade, just for the speed improvements, the graphic improvements, and that line tool. Anyway, thank you for listening, and we hope that if you haven't seen Pospec already, that you take a look.